It is now 2.55, so I am going to go because we only have a couple minutes. Hello, everybody. My name is Van Lindberg. Uh, I, uh, I've been around open source for a long time, mostly as a lawyer, and now I run an, open, an OSPO as a service company. So I've seen a lot of these things either directly helping people or sometimes from the sidelines just sort of under knowing what's going on and having talked to some of the people involved. And so I wanted to actually dive into ways in which we can really create value destruction through an OSPO. So what is essentially an OSPO disaster? And I put together these essentially the four points. An OSPO disaster is not just something that it is a bad decision. Everybody makes bad decisions. Everybody makes mistakes. What makes it a true disaster is and an OSPO disaster. It's something caused by your open source policies or practices, by people who should know better, that causes value destruction. And so we're going to be talking about some of these, play, these instances of value destruction through very bad policies. I will note that every situation that I talk about today is true. If I use a real world, uh, if I use a real world company, it is because the details are public or uh, public. If I, use a, if I don't use the actual name of the company, it is because there are confidentiality provisions, but I can say, but I can share the things that I'm sharing today. So without further ado, let's start with number one. How do you create value destruction? Well, the first way you create value destruction, you do it wrong, is by driving your people away. Now, one of the things that we keep on hearing is it's so hard to hire. It's so hard to get, your, get good people, get good developers. But if you don't have a good, uh, a, a good open source policy and you attract those really good developers, you will drive them away. So the example I've got for this one is, uh, is a few years back. This was, happened actually to a friend of mine. He was the lead developer on a, pro on a project that happened to be used by Apple. And, and Apple sent him a, an offer because they wanted him specifically to work on his open source project because it was a key part of some of their infrastructure. He was an Apple fan. He was thrilled. He joined, and promptly he found out that Apple's internal policies did not allow him to contribute back any of the bug fixes that he discovered uh, while working for Apple. Uh, so again, this is, this is something where they would have been helped by trying to, by just letting him do his thing, but they, they were unable to. This happens also in a little bit more uh, sort of friendly way. Sometimes we hug our, our our open source developers to death. I, we are so excited about them, we bring them in, and then all of a sudden, what, what do we do? We give them so much work that their open source work dies on the vine. Don't let this happen, because what, what ends up happening is they get discouraged. The thing that brought them in was their interactions with the community. People are very infrequently really just excited about the code. They're excited about the community that they've built let them interact with their community. So what's the value destruction here? Well, the Society for Human Resource Management estimates that it costs anywhere from 75 to 200% of a, of a person's salary, higher for higher level people, to replace somebody. So every time you lose, some of the, lose someone, estimate that you're going to be spending 100 to 200% of, the, of their cost just to replace them. Plus, some of these people aren't really replaceable. But let's go on. This is, a, this is a valuable one. What makes open source open source? It is the licenses. Now, of course, let us decide what, what happens when we decide to ignore these licenses. Well, one for one true story, um, for, for one true story, there was a company that had some secret sauce in terms of managing certain types of cloud, uh, cloud accounts, cloud in infrastructure. And they were, they were being looked at for an acquisition. So we came in and, we, we came in and they, we did the scan and started reviewing the scan. Turns out that they had built into, their, into the very core of, what they, uh, of their product uh, GPL code. And what's more, they had distributed it as an image to multiple people, including the acquiring company. 
So the result was, uh, by, our, by our analysis, they had actually granted all the rights that they had in this code to the acquirer inadvertently. And what, and what made things especially fun is that they had also uh, they, they had also not gotten some of their copyright license, uh, copyright license agreements or copyright assignment agreements from contractors so that there was significant code that they had no rights to use at all. What was the concrete, what was the concrete destruction here? Well, it was a, a $25 million deal that was in completely cut. I was talking with someone the other day about this particular example and he said, uh, th this person does M&A review for various companies. He said, yep, I had to do that once. This was, this was the only time I've had to do it, but a com on Friday night, I found this issue. Saturday morning, I was on the phone with a VP, and on, by Monday morning, the deal was dead. Here's one that is near and dear to my heart. Um, Please, if you really want to destroy value, bring out your lawyers to threaten people in the open source community, especially your users. Um, this has happened more times than you might think. It's happened two times in fairly recent memory. Uh, one was there was a company called Kick Interactive. They make a, like a chat type thing. And there was another open source developer who wanted to, who had a package Kick. Um, that package kick on NPM, um, and they they went back and forth, and they they went back and forth. And can we please have this? We want to launch a kick package on NPM. No, you can't. I'm doing this is my thing. All right, this is our trademark. We're going to sue you. Turns out that this person happened to be the author of 237 NPM packages, one of which was. Left pad. Do you remember this? Uh, he he immediately removed all of his. He unpublished all the things from npm, which instantly broke hundreds or even thousands of different packages, including some of the ones that were depended upon by Kick Interactive. Uh, there was another case with someone named Replit, where someone said, "Hey, I'm going to make an open source. Uh, I'm going to make an open source copy of." Or an open source thing that allows people to run various code in, in the browser. Turns out that Replit had, uh, had done this, and they accused him of violating their trademark, which they didn't have, actually, uh, in sort of the, uh, the, the trademark and copyright and trade secret in the things that were visible to everybody, which they didn't have. As a result, the, the publicly, the, the CEO had to go on Hacker News and, and and, and apologize and all this. It was not good for the company. But while I've got a couple, so I want to just briefly touch on the lessons learned. Number one, people create value through communities. Let people do it. The value in open source is in the people. It's not in the code. So let people interact. Make a protected space for them both in terms of their time and in terms of their, your policies to allow them to interact with the community. Number two, pay attention to licenses. I know I'm a lawyer, and maybe that sounds true, trite and the lawyerly thing to say, but if you don't get the licenses right, everything else falls apart. And number three, don't try to threaten your community, particularly with lawyers. It will never end well. So, in the 90 seconds that I have left, I want to give a special thanks to uh, Oracle for being the grandmasters. No one can ever touch them in terms of value destruction. Um, I'll just talk about a couple things. The first one, I don't know if any of you have heard of Hudson. Hudson is what it, it was a revolutionary new way to build and test your code. Uh, it, it was made by some Sun employees when Oracle, when Oracle bought them. Oracle's like, we want to completely control this and make this our proprietary product. And, and they were like, no, no, no. And they were some back and forth, and they wanted to go to Git. And so Oracle said, well, you can do what you want, community, but you can't use the trademark. 
So what they did is they forked it. They created Jenkins, which I'm sure you've heard of, and they completely lost the entire market. As of today, 51% of that, 51% of all uh, continuous integration infrastructures run by Jenkins, which was lock, stock, and barrel owned at one point by Oracle. But, and you can, you can add up some of, the, uh, some of the, the, the money there. Another one is OpenOffice. Anyone remember OpenOffice? I mean, technically it's still around. Yes, if you think back to 2010, uh, 2010, it had between 15 and 25% and of the entire market. When you think about it, that is an incredibly outrageous amount of the entire market. There was one study who said, this is unstoppable. Open Office will continue to take uh, market share against Microsoft Office. Oracle said, hold my beer. Um, within the span of eight weeks, uh, Oracle got convinced, uh, convinced because of their open source policies and, and, and threatening about their trademark, they got every single, essentially all developers to leave for uh, LibreOffice. In December, they announced they had the very last lease, OpenOffice 3.3. .3. Within, within the year, they had to pay the Apache Software Foundation to take it off their hands. That little thing up there is a graph of total commits and total activity. Green is OpenOffice since uh, 2009. Blue is LibreOffice. LibreOffice still has over 200 million contributors. Again, that's kind of a market that you'd like to have. So that is, with, with that, my time is up. I'd be happy to talk to anyone. There are other things that you can do, like take advantage of your com community by completely changing license. You can do other things that all very much destroy value, but, this is, but my time is up. Thanks.